Dean, I've been obsessed with the mind-body problem my whole life. Sounds crazy, and it's, it's more than just a philosophical problem. It really tells us what we are as human beings. I was so nuts about it that I did a PhD in brain science to try to get at the problem. As a philosopher, how can you begin to lay out the mind-body problem so we can, we can understand the scope of it? I sort of think of it as, as uh, having two basic components. Um, you can be asking about uh, mental states of various kinds, and you can sort of list them. There's various kinds of thinking, believing, desiring, hoping, entertaining thoughts, and so on. There's also uh, uh, phenomenal states, uh, various kinds of feelings, bodily feelings, sensations, different kinds. And these seem to fall into into two natural categories. Um, the, the, the first are often called intentional. You're thinking about something, mm. something distinct from yourself. You're somehow managing with your mind to reach out and grab onto uh, parts of the world in some way. Uh, and you can think about things that don't exist. You know, how do you do that? <laughs> um, but that, that's, that's uh, a part of the mind that seems to have to do with, um, uh, with with referring and with uh, truth and falsehood. So when you think these things, you know, if I think there is a unicorn, I think something false. <laughs> if I think that there isn't, I think something true. Um, then the phenomenal side doesn't seem to have to do with truth and falsity and, and uh, uh, referring to things outside yourself. It's, uh, it's, it's a matter of, you know, how things feel to you. And um, seems more primitive in a way, I guess. Um, and I think these probably, this is probably a very natural kind of division of mental states into two kinds. Um, and then you can ask two sorts of questions about mental states. Um, you can ask, what is it that has these things? Okay. Um, and I take this to be the question of you could call it substance materialism versus substance dualism. So you're asking, what is the substance or the thing that has these intentional states and these phenomenal states? What is it? Um, you know, answers, it's the brain. I mean, that's a very natural answer because... In the mind-body problem, that's the way it was characterized hundreds of years ago, but it's really the mind-brain problem. It, that feels right, because you look at the whole body, it seems like the whole body doesn't doesn't, uh, isn't essentially involved in thinking, right? right? You could whittle it away bit by bit until, uh, you know, just the brain is left and, and in principle it feels like they're, they're, they could still be thinking. So, uh, so it does seem to focus on uh, 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 the brain as a very natural candidate for the thing that is the subject of these mental states. So would that be the substance materialism yes. part so of that, this? So that would be substance materialism. Now, of course, there have been other versions of substance materialism mm -hmm. that have said, no, 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 it's not just the brain. I am a thinking thing. I'm also an organism, you know, from my toes to my head. That's the thing that's thinking. It somehow thinks because there's a brain inside of it, but it's not the brain that's the subject of these mental states. It's the, the animal. The whole animal. Mm -hmm. I, I sort of think, you know, if I was going to be a materialist, which I'm, I'm, you know, in my heart of hearts, I'm not. <laughs> but if I was going to be one, I would say, yeah, well, there's this whole organism here, but, you know, my toenails and my hair, they don't have much to do with my thinking. I would go to the brain. I would say, it's got to be the, that organ that's, uh, that's thinking if any physical thing is thinking. Um, so, so that's, the, the alternative to, to the view that these mental states are possessed by an, uh, a material object is that it's something else, you know, something that somehow is closely associated with this body, but that's not made out of the same kind of parts, not made out of, not made out of the same kind of substances as chairs and tables mm -hmm. and things. Yeah, but, of course, this body is just made out of the same kind of... Yeah, and when you're dealing with substance materialism, that, that allows us to think about can there be other substances besides brains and bodies that can, in a materialistic way, produce those same kinds of things? Can computers, supercomputers, right. quantum computers, other right. things represent that, that same kind of, 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 uh, of uh, mental states? Yeah, or is there something special about... Uh, 
organic stuff. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a derivative question, but it's still under this concept of substance materialism. Yeah. What is the substance? If you're a purely materialist, materialist being that only matter is real or only matters and forces or things in the physical world, naturalism. Yeah, right. And there might be different answers to these two different, uh, with respect to these two different kinds of mental states. So you might say, uh -huh. um, look, uh, intentional phenomena, so believing something, desiring something, thinking about an object, um, you can do all of these things without having any particular phenomenal experiences. So uh, kind of stock example, if I'm thinking about Vienna, there doesn't have to be any particular mental imagery that goes along with that or any particular feelings. You know, maybe I have a kind of image of a church that I saw there or, or uh, the sound of an organ that I heard in that church there, or, you know, or some kind of image of a map of the, the ring. Mm -hmm. uh, but none of those are crucial to the thought. Um, so perhaps phenomenal experiences are not really necessary for that kind of thinking. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, you know, phenomenal experiences seem kind of, kind of more primitive, and we sort of, we sort of assume that higher animals have them, and 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 lack the capacity for some of these more complicated mm -hmm. intentional mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I guess some people have thought, no problem about having a computer that has intentional mental states. You know, so you hook up the computer in the right way, and it. You know, it, maybe it's, uh, it's processing information, uh, taking in information about the environment, and, and, and uh, maybe it's got robotic arms and so mm -hmm. on, so it's able to interact with the environment. You can say, well, it believes that there's a cube over mm -hmm. there, and it wants to move the cube mm -hmm. over, you know. Th th so, but, but you might think it, it doesn't have any phenomenal experience. Uh, and so I think some people have thought that... Um, well, they've been really convinced by their gut feeling that the computer could never have phenomenal experiences and have said, must have something to do with organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. So the, the phenomenal really Th those is... Those are still the materialists. Right. Yeah. Right. So Absolutely. they're fully materialist, naturalist, yeah. but they still will differentiate between uh, the different kinds of substances that can, that can engender the phenomenal states. Right, right. And, and then, and then you know, plenty of people have thought, no computer could, you know, computers can only simulate right, thinking right, of any kind. Right. Um, now, if you're a materialist, I don't quite see where the confidence, where that confidence <laughs> comes from. Uh, uh, because after all, you know, we're, we're just big uh, uh, physical things <laughs> kind, of, kind of navigating in our environment and... Uh, I don't, so, so I don't see anything crucial. So you believe if you're, if you're a materialist, you know, the distinction between just being a, a, a bodily brain organic materialist and a, and a, a, a silicon or gallium arsenide computer right. uh, is really a, a difficult distinction to make. I, I, I do, uh, yeah, I think that. I, I, th I think it might, you might be able to make this case that uh, phenomenal qualities are really different and... Uh, uh, perhaps silicon chips just can't produce those. Mm -hmm. um, but that would just be a sort of contingent fact about the way the world works. It turns out you can generate that kind of, you know, uh, uh, brilliant, colorful phenomenology. Mm -hmm. You can generate that if you use this kind of stuff, but you can't generate it if you use uh, <laughs> chips. So what about substance uh, uh, dualism? Uh, uh, right. So, I mean... Uh, uh, a lot of people have a you know, kind of in principle objections to substance dualism. They'll say, look, uh, what's it supposed to be? Some kind of extra something or other that has these mental states of some kind, but it's distinct from the body. So it's non physical. But if it existed, surely it would, if it was any good at all, it would be pushing things around in my brain. 
Uh, it would be interacting with my brain, like Descartes thought that it did. Um, so if it's pushing physical stuff around, well, then surely it's just another piece of physical stuff. Uh, and so it's not immaterial or non-physical after all. Uh, this is sort of a kind of in-principle objection that's supposed to keep dualism from even getting off the ground. Um, but I, I think when, when you look at, at the traditional views that have been thought of as dualistic, you know, from animistic kind of views where, you know, there's the soul of the tree, there's the soul, souls of animals and souls of, 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 of human beings as well. Uh, they've thought that there was a different kind of substance, and the substance was different from ordinary objects, uh, and yet somehow uh, able to interact. And um, then later, kind of more sophisticated dualisms like Descartes had attributed various properties to this extra thing. Um, so I, I regard uh, you know, substance dualism as a, as a kind of spectrum of views. You could have a very extreme kind of substance dualism that says the thing that has mental states like you know, thinking about you or having feelings, that thing is utterly unlike the stuff that physics studies, the stuff that, that can make up non-sentient things like chairs and tables. Um, and so the parts of our bodies, we see that they're made out of the same kind of stuff as chairs and tables. So the most extreme dualism says the thinkers, that whatever thinkers there are, are very unlike anything that you could make out of that sort of stuff. Um, most extreme kind would say thinkers are outside of time, outside of space. They have absolutely no properties in common with anything that could be made out of non-sentient material. Less extreme kinds of dualism, more familiar ones. Uh, souls are outside of space, but they're in time. So that seems very natural. I mean, it's hard to, you know, what would it mean to say I'm outside of time? I have one thought, and then I have another thought, and another thought after that. So I, I seem to be very much, you know, in, 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 enmeshed with the uh, uh, with temporal events. So uh, less extreme dualisms say, I'm, I'm in time, not in space, have no properties in common with in, in sentient, not, uh, unthinking matter. Um, and then you have other gradations too. So some people, uh, Hermann Lutze, uh, who's one of my favorite philosophers, yeah. favorite forgotten philosophers, um, he thought that uh, souls were in space, that they're located in the brain. Uh, where exactly? Well, of course, Descartes thought that you interact with the pineal gland, but uh, Lutze knew a bit more about the brain, and he thought, well, there's stuff going on all over the, you know, all over the place in the brain, so the soul has to be here sometimes, it has to be here sometimes, and it's wherever it needs to be, basically. Uh, and it doesn't have parts uh, located here, parts located here. It is just here, and then it's also here, and also here. Um, but anyway, his souls were in space, uh, but they lacked all sorts of other properties that ordinary matter has. Um, and uh, you could have even more sort of, you know, you could have ectoplasmic, divisible mm -hmm. souls um, that still ought to count as a kind of dualism as long as you're claiming only thinkers are made out of this kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, thinkers can't be made out of this kind of stuff. 